Hey guys, Mr. Mac, and today we're going to be talking about um, how to interpret something called R squared, how to interpret something called S, um, and then I want to make sure that you understand how to write out computer, like if they give you a computer output, how to actually change that and identify all the parts of the least squares regression line from that computer output, because that is on uh, one of the things that is expected on the AP exam. And then um, how do you tell if a linear model is appropriate if you're given what's called a residual plot, which is really easy to do. You just got to look at it and decide if it's linear. So very easy to tell. All right, well, let's start with, um, let's actually, yeah, let's start with R squared. And we'll define this first. R squared um, is called also called the, um, the coefficient kind of a crazy name here, of determination. And this is kind of hard to explain, but it tells us um, how much better or how much better it is to use our least squares regression line than just to use the average of all the y's. And so um, the definition would be um, percent of variability. And don't, I mean, this is going to be very technical, so don't worry about this. In the response variable. that is accounted for, so it's accounted for by the least squares regression line. So basically, it's kind of a measure of how much better is it to use the least squares regression line um, than it would be to use the, just the average of all the y's. Um, because you could just take all the, all the y values, average them, right? That's right in the middle of all the y values and use that as a predictor. Um, but the least squares regression line is probably more accurate in a lot of data. And so this is a measure of how much more accurate. And you see it's R squared. And we've been dealing with R, which is the um, correlation, right? And this is, this is the correlation squared, OK? So if you take the correlation squared, you get this R squared. They are related. They are the same, basically, except this is always positive, because when you square it, it becomes positive. Uh, just to note. R squared is always between 0 and 1. It's always positive. It's always less than 1. Um, and it's a percentile, right? It's a percentage. So how, how do you interpret it? Because that's what you really need to know. And that's what I'm going to be holding you accountable for. And you would say um, it, the um, percent, here's, here's one way that I would accept the percent of variation, oops, in Y that can be explained by the least squares regression line. And of course, instead of Y, um, you would put the actual context, right, what the Y value is. And instead of the percent, you would say the actual percent. So, you know, if, if, if R was like, 0.78, you'd say 78% of the variation in whatever hair length can be explained by age or whatever it is, right? Or can be explained by the least squares regression line. Um, so that's how you're going to interpret this. The parts that underland, you're going to change. So this will be the actual percent that you put in. Act, oops, actual percent. And this will be the context of what X, uh, what Y really is, okay? Now let's talk about this S, which is really the standard deviation of residuals. Oops. And um, this is how far off or how how far uh, away from the standard deviation, I'm sorry, from the least squares regression line, you would expect any point to be. 
So it's a measure of how far from the least squares regression line a point is expected to be. Or in other words, like if you if you use the least squares regression line, S will tell you like how far off you can expect to be. And it, it's not it doesn't tell you above or below. So there's no positives or negatives here. It's just a it's just a distance. Um, but it's kind of like a measure of how how far off what what can you expect your error to be? How different we do you expect your um, your prediction to be from from the actual? And of course, this varies. Of uh, you know, obviously your error varies, right? Residuals sometimes are positive, sometimes are negative. They're different lengths. But this is kind of like an average of those. Not just an average though. It's a it's because if you took the average of all your residuals, you'd actually get zero because some are above and some are below. Um, so this is more of a um, uh, it's kind of like an average, but it's more of a, um, an average of their, it's kind of wrong, but it's, it's the average basically if you turned it into all of them into positives, kind of, kind of, okay? And your interpretation, oops, again, this is what I really care about. When, when I asked you to interpret S, you would say something like this. We ex expect to, um, we, we, let me, actually, let me make sure I do this correctly because I don't want to. I know how to do it, but I, I just want to make sure I'm. I'm uh, okay, we expect the Ys, uh, and of course, you're going to put something in there, to um, vary by S, and again, you're going to put the value in there, right? Um, from the predicted Y values um, from the least squares regression line. So if you use the least squares regression line, you get a predicted value. S is how far off you can expect to be. So, but this is, this is what I'm looking for, something like this, okay? Um, and again, the things I underlined, you're going to replace with context and actual numbers. So this would be replaced with context, right? What the real y values are, same thing here. Uh, don't forget the word predicted, too. That's really important. And then um, S would be you put in the actual number, right? The actual values, the actual value right there, okay? So those things that I have underlined are, are don't don't change that. But the things I have underlined right here or boxed, whatever, you're gonna actually put in real stuff, uh, real words and stuff. 